Good morning, everyone. Today we shall be discussing the titanium elastic nailing technique for femoral fractures in children. Transverse fractures of the femur are the commonest femoral fractures that you will see. Before you start your surgery, your setup should be adequate. The child is supine under general anesthesia over a radiolucent table. The C arm should be in front of you. The monitor should be in straight line of your vision so that you can see your maneuvers very clearly. Lay out your instruments on the trolley. The nails are color coded so that you can choose them immediately. The awls, the bending tools, the F tool, the chuck on the T handle, the straight and the curved awls and a slotted hammer for insertion and extraction and the seating tool. First step would be to align the fracture by linear traction and then you must choose your nail. The seating points of the nail to form a spindle are the supracondylar metaphyseal bone and the intertrochantric metaphyseal bone such that a spindle forms at the fracture. The diameter of the nail should be chosen such that it occupies 40% of the canal at the isthmus, which means 0.4 into the inner canal diameter at the isthmus. Alternatively, you can just choose a couple of nails which you think are appropriate and place them on the femur so that you can see that they are going to be adequate and occupy 80% of the canal diameter. As seen in this video, I am placing the nails on the shaft that is the perfect amount of canal fill that I want. Then I need to bend the nail. So with an artery forcer from the seating point, which is the intertrochantric line, I am going to choose where should be my apex of the bend. And I will bend the nail along the curve of the hockey stick. So I will choose my apex first and start my bending from there. I will bend gradually on either side of the apex and the height of the bend as I proceed on both the sides should be such that it is three times the canal diameter. For example, if it's an 8 millimeter canal, this height should be 24 millimeters. Equal bend on both sides, rest of the nail can remain straight. So bend both the nails symmetrically so that they match each other and they form a perfect spindle when inserted. The nail should be then loaded onto the T handle with the chuck such that you know the alignment of the curve along the one of the prongs of the chuck so that you don't have to take a CM shoot. The incision is about two finger breadths proximal to the facial plate as seen on CM or around the superior pole of the patella. Make your entry into the canal initially with a drill bit or a straight awl and then use a curved awl so that you enter the canal in the correct diameter direction I mean right so that the first nail then goes in from the lateral side and bounces off the medial cortex advance the nail with gentle rotational movements don't spiral them just rocking movements to reach the fracture site the medial incision again is subvastus make sure that your entry is slightly posterior to the suprapatellar uh, synovial fold so that no irritation happens. Go obliquely first, enter the canal and then widen the, canal, the entry point using a curved awl. So this is the video which is showing you the Siam shoot which is showing you entry into the canal. Then you will use a larger curved awl to increase the dimension like, like so and make sure that you have entered the metaphyseal bone and into the canal. In a moment we shall see the entry into the canal. Right. And once you are into the canal, then make sure that there is no conflict between two, the two nails. They don't hit each other and then enter the canal such that it bounces off the lateral cortex along the curve of the hockey stick. Now both these nails will be gradually advanced to reach the fracture site. Right? So once they are at the fracture site, as seen here on the video, 
with linear traction you have reduced it now you need to pass the nail into the proximal fragment the nail which is easier to pass in the proximal fragment is usually passed first and the second nail then follows very often at the first pass you see that it has not entered the canal and what needs to be done is a bolster underneath the femur to restore the anterior bow which corrects the posterior sag and make sure that the canals are now lined up perfectly so here using the lateral nail i have passed the nail into the proximal fragment as you will see in a moment it's engaging on the tip there of of the proximal fragment so you turn it a little bit and there you have engaged the proximal fragment pass the nail for about a centimeter or two and then you'll realize that because of your nail bending the femur gets deformed into valgus now we need to pass the medial nail the medial nail again when you pass it with gentle rotational movements small movements to advance it gradually and you find that at the first instance you may just miss and go out as seen here withdraw the nail and turn it by 90 degrees so that the tip now faces anterior very often you need to be a little more anterior and that's the second pass and you still see that it hasn't correctly gone so i have withdraw it turn it a little bit more and you can see in the lower part of the, yes now you can see it is pointing anteriorly and now i can pass the nail across into the proximal fragment now i have engaged the proximal fragment and i will derotate the nail to go back to its original position then with gentle movements i pass the medial nail up to the lesser trochanter and the lateral nail up to the tip of the trochanter so that i don't injure the trochanteric physis i should stay short of that confirm the reduction and the placement the medial nail can go up to the neck because more metaphyseal bone is available there and the spindle has completely formed at perfectly at the apex where we expect it to be always check the lateral so that you know that the fracture is well aligned and you can also check that it is stable in both the views make sure that your nail seating is in the metaphysis and has not penetrated the fascial plate that's the gentle final seating and now once you know the seating points we need to withdraw the nail a little bit about a centimeter so that you can cut the nail use a big harrington rod cutter or a special tool if it's available to you for cutting the nail and cut the nail such that about an inch remains outside flush with the lateral cortex right so it's important to do this step correctly this is not a k wire which needs to be bent at right angles and left outside otherwise it causes a lot of irritation of ligaments and synovium causing stiff knee make sure it goes under the muscle and then there is a special seating tool so you can see here that the nail is now along the cortex that is the proximal seating point that's the spindle at the fracture which looks pretty good that is the seating tamp you can see it has a bevel turn it around it has a small hollow and then tap it so that it reaches the cortex when it is seated flush you will still find 1 cm nail lying outside the cortex for you to remove it later <coughs> you can see that it has moved proximally and the canal is well occupied 80% canal fill with excellent spindling and that is the seating in the neck and at the trochanter once you have done with cutting both the nails then check that they are away from the growth plate so that you don't cause any growth disturbance or stimulation that's the spindle at the apex and that's the seating and final step is going to be flexing the knee in a transfer fracture especially and a gentle thump on the patella so that we cause a little compression always check rotations they have to be equal sometimes a mal rotational reduction may cause an abnormal gait pattern in a child so check the version correctly once this is done you take subcuticular sutures 
and I use a Gamgee dressing with a crepe bandage. Fracture patterns which are inherently stable, transverse, short oblique with minimal comminution and between 5 years to 12 years which is the ideal indication for titanium nailing in a child, less than 49 kilograms. Heavier kids, this is not recommended, may be unstable. So then these children, we give a Gamgee dressing with a compression bandage, no plaster is applied. After 48 hours, when the pain is less, we start bedside knee bending, mobilization exercises, and the child can start walking on a walker on the third to fourth day. Toe touch and partial weight bearing can commence at the end of third to fourth week, and by six weeks, you will see superb callus around the fracture site, and you can take away the crutches or the walker and allow the child to move around. In three months, usually the fracture heals, and nail removal is done between six to nine months preferably in the next vacation. During removal of the nail, I prefer to pass a small hollow mill around the tip of the nail which has been left outside, bend it acutely to 90 degrees, then use a plier and back hammer it so that it comes out easily. Otherwise, with time, it does get stuck and removal can be a bigger issue than insertion. And finally, removal of implant is a big issue because most of the times the parents or the patient wants an implant removed you should remove implant in the femur after 6 months, preferably less than 18 months. Forearm fractures you can remove it later because it takes longer to heal. When you remove the nail, as I said, the nail has to be flush a centimeter out. Use a small periosteum elevator. Get under the nail so that you can hold it with a uh, wrench or a plier. Special extractors are available in the AO set which have a shark fin against which you can hammer. And these are locking clamps. If you don't have this, what I prefer to do, I'll just show you. Ashok, again, can you help me with the slide? Yeah. I'm not able to go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just show you this small video here. Okay, we have to go back. Okay. Now we are going in front. Yeah. yeah. So this is a small video which I wanted you to see. Everybody in their hospital will have a hollow mill. Right? So I'll just show you what I do with the hollow mill. Right? You can see the nail tip here. This is a femur nail that I am removing. That's the <coughs> nail tip flush with the cortex. So just insert a hollow mill, bend the nail 90 degrees. Once you bend the nail, your plier can grip it very well. Okay, and then you can backhammer it because it's a small area there and it's very difficult to hold the nail. It becomes so easy, right? I'll run this again for you. The nail, one centimeter is usually left outside flush with the cortex. You can see that here. After exposing it, just pass a small hollow mill around that, right? Against the cortex, turn it 90 degrees. You will be able to do that. And then you will be able to hold it with a plier at 90 degrees and then backhammer it. Sometimes holding it with the tip becomes very, very difficult and it keeps on slipping. So this is a small tip that you can do. I hope these small tips, tricks of pure elastic nailing will help you in your day-to-day -day practice. And I th thank Dr. Nitin Deshpande, President MOI, for this great initiative where we can share our surgical skills with all the MOI members so that everyone can benefit. Thank you very much.